Joining us live is a security expert, Dr. Kabir Adamu, Managing Director of Bacon Consulting Limited. Thank you, Dr. Kabir, for joining us on the news. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening to you. The federal government through the Nigerian army is considering integrating repentant Boko Haram to the society. Do you see these as necessary? Uh, well, it's part of our national counterterrorism strategy. Uh, that strategy recognizes the role of um, the deradicalization program, which is being carried out under Operation um, Safe Corridor. Now, whether that program is being done the way it's supposed to be done to ensure that the um, repentant uh, terrorists are actually deradicalized is a subject of, of debate. But um, suffice to say, it is a part of our national counterterrorism strategy, which was started as far back as 2014. Some Nigerians seem not to understand why this set of people should be given this kind of opportunity, considering the level of damage they've done to society. Could this move to integrate these Boko Haram fighters have come at a worse time? What's your reaction to that? I agree. Uh, the concern is valid. Um, there is a need for an independent um, study to understand whether the objectives of the um, Operation Safe Corridor is actually being met. Um, I am personally a bit concerned that it's the military that is, uh, or the defense headquarters that is driving Operation Safe Corridor. I do not think the, those who conceptualized Operation Safe Corridor had it in mind that it will be driven by the military. I'm aware that about different, 12 different um, departments in government are involved in, the, in Operation Safe Corridor, or rather are supposed to be involved. They, I have no way of knowing whether those 12 are actually being involved. So for instance, there is an education component, there is a religion component, then there is also a sports component as well as skill acquisition component. All of these things together would help in the deradicalization process. Now, if it's the military that is driving the process, how uh, adequately equipped is the military to ensure that these objectives are being met? So those con concerns are valid and they need to be addressed. And the only way to address them is for government to um, put out, um, uh, open some level of um, this program, make it a bit open so that there will be an ind independent study, perhaps by um, ac 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 academics, to understand whether the objectives of this um, deradicalization program is being met. Now, many people have said that the government is quite insensitive to its people, given the fact that here you are trying to rehabilitate um, insurgents. And what about the victims of these insurgents? They also should be rehabilitated. Do you think in any way this is more evidence of the insensitivity of our government? Um, not at all. Uh, Studies around the world have um, adopted and actually recognized the role of deradicalization in any counter-terrorism uh, strategy. The, the level of information that is being gotten from this deradicalized terrorist is huge and it's contributory to the counter-terrorism campaign. Now, when, people, when some people say that government has not been sensitive to the plights of the victims, I do not think that's correct. I can list at least about three or four different government departments that are um, attempting to meet the needs of the victims. Let's start from the newly created Ministry of, um, uh, Rehab, of, of um, Humanitarian uh, Affairs, Disaster Management, and uh, whatever. Um, that, that ministry is meant to meet, meet the needs of um, the, the victims. Of course, before the ministry, there was the Northeast Development um, Commission. Then there is the Victim Support, Support Fund. There is also the Safe, Safe Schools Initiative. Um, and several other aspects of humanitarian support and development. Um, NEMA, as well as the state emergency manage management agencies, are all aspects of this support. So I think um, Nigerians need to be a bit open to and receptive to this type of ideas. But more importantly, the communication strategy that is inherent within our counter-terrorism strategy, NACTEST, that communication strategy need to be revamped by government. It was doing very well, then all of a sudden it, it went down. Um, now, it is because this communication strategy is missing, that is why some Nigerians don't even recognize the role of some of these agencies that I've mentioned. All they hear is, of course, the op Operation Safe Corridor, when in reality government has already put in place several other me measures to meet the needs of victims. Now, we know when we began to hear about this rehabilitation program, are we to believe that in a time span, these erstwhile killers, terrorists, have been transformed into well-adjusted citizens? 
Um, my, I, I would, I'm a bit hesitant to give a yes or no answer. The reason is because there is a stated objective, which is to de-radicalize them. And I've read the objectives. I've read the strategy. It looks very plausible. And as an academician, I would say, yes, it's doable. But of course, in this climate in Nigeria, everything is possible. So that's why I think we need to uh, conduct an, an, um, um, an independent uh, investigation to understand whether the stated objectives are actually being met. I mentioned earlier on that I'm not too comfortable that it is the defense headquarters that is driving this Operation Safe Corridor. I do not think those who conceived of the idea had it in mind that it would be the defense headquarters that would drive it. I think it's better, civilians are better suited to drive um, the, the radicalization program, of course, with the support of, of the military or the defense headquarters. So um, on, unless and until such an independent study is conducted to ensure that the stated objectives are, are being met, then it will be difficult for you know me to sit and say, yes, the objectives are being met. But the objectives are clear. I like them. It's possible to de-radicalize terrorists. It's been done across the world. I mean, even the biggest economy in the world, the biggest democracy, America, has Guantanamo Bay, and it has freed some of the inmates from Guantanamo Bay because it believed, quote unquote, they've been de-radicalized. The circumstances are different, but um, the whole idea, the concept is the same. But there seems to be some kind of rush about this. Wouldn't you agree? Um, not exactly. The, like I said, I've, I've looked at the strategy. Um, this um, inmates or, you know, clients, whatever the defense headquarters want, wants to call them, are supposed to be put through a program. Now, once that program is, is, is achieved, I remember this started in 2014. It didn't start yesterday. Um, so I, do, I, I would not subscribe to the you know, uh, belief or perspective that there is a rush. Uh, what would determine whether there is a rush or not is whether the objective of the program has been met. And unless and until we, we have an independent study, it will be difficult to know whether those objectives have been met. Um, I know there have been perspectives and uh, theories that uh, suggest some of these freed clans have actually gone back to join the groups. But there are several other circumstances that may lead to that. Um, one, one of them is that this, the environment that created the terrorism in the first place has not changed. The circumstances, the socioeconomic conditions, um, lack of security, name them, they still exist in the society. And we're freeing these people to do society. Another one, of course, is the public, um, you know, the profiling and the stigmatization that is associated with this uh, clients or inmates that have been released. They, they, they no longer will be accepted in the society. And once they are rejected, unfortunately, they are tempted to go back into those old, old ways. So it, it's, it's, a, it's a whole lot of issues that need to be addressed. Uh, but like I said earlier, on strat strategic communication would help. And currently, that is missing. Finally, Dr. Kabil, um, the tendency of them being rejected by the community, and you said um, they might be tempted to go back, but there's also the possibility they might, they might ensue clashes between this re, um, de radicalized, repentant Boko Haram members and the community they might find themselves. Now, who to take the responsibility for that if that ever happens? Um, if we had been doing the right type of communication and engagement, um, then that would have been taken care of. In other words, members of the society would understand why it's important for this type of de-radicalization to take place and more, why it's also important for the de-radicalized um, clients or you know, inmates, whatever we want to call them, to be received back into society. But because that is not being done ad adequately, unfortunately, stigmatization is taking place. Um, clashes are not likely to occur. Uh, if they were, we would have heard about them. Uh, you journalists would have documented them. Civil society organizations would have documented them. What I know is happening is stigmatization and, and, and rejection. And un unfortunately, that is not helping our current situation. Dr. Cabral, it's been a pleasure having you join us on the news. Thank you very much. The pleasure is mine.